Hello, my name is Sasha Craddock and I'm a critic and curator. And I'm delighted to be invited to Pushkin House to look at John Askew's exhibition of photographs from Russia. I have a strong relationship to John and his work and so it's a kind of honour to be able to talk to him. So at the top of the very grand flight of stairs at Pushkin House and this place is very, very important for exhibitions and I've come to see exhibitions that I've very much liked. What it does is it combines a rather grand yet domestic context and scale to the exhibition of work. And so I think that some of the work we're going to have to, our discussion is going to take in to consider how one places something that goes from one context, which is a domestic context elsewhere, in Russia, near Perm, back to the context here, which is Pushkin House, which is about sort of the social history or the cultural history of Russia. And so we have that kind of something in common, but also we have a kind of reinvention of the view of these photographs in terms of where they're represented and placed. And so here we are at the top of the stairs with a fantastic light well. And uh, I think that John, I think I'm going to ask you something very straightforward, which is about your decisions around hanging in this place and what it is you thought about Pushkin House that would suit your work. I was very excited with this space. Uh, when, when I saw it, it was one of the reasons I, I wanted to, to show the exhibition here. I did an undergraduate degree in sculpture at Sunderland, and I always consider very carefully how to install my work, as, as much as the photographs themselves. Yeah, I mean, here we are. We have, in a way, a situation where you sort of, let's say, metaphorically set out your stall. Now, I just have to explain uh, for the benefit of people who do not know your work, that this, these photographs have been taken over an immensely long time. Here we have three different sorts, basically the figure, a kind of context of infinity, the beautiful space going away, and then something that is perhaps a motif for all the work, the relationship between pattern, interior and domestic. Perhaps you could explain very, very simply as you can, your relationship to these people and to this place. In 1996, I was invited to have an exhibition in Perm. That's how it all came about. And then the relationship with the family came because Georgi Shulikov sponsored the exhibition. There wasn't a much, much money in Perm then, but uh, Georgi paid for my train fare from Moscow to Perm. He printed the advertising posters for much of the time there I stayed with his family and that was a, a significant gesture. It was a gesture of faith, faith in the importance of art and friendship and in what photography can promise. I became dear friends with Georgi and his family and over the next 25 years I returned again and again to Russia to visit them. I mean we have this constant teenering of time and history and memory with photographs of the family and their context and also John's relationship to the place. I cannot tell you how important it is in terms of photography for certain photographers to go back to somewhere. Photography isn't just about what you find straight away, it's about sort of some kind of sense of knowledge or familiarity. And this is a strange relationship between a photographer who comes from somewhere else but is very familiar with the people over time, returns and returns. So in a way you get that strange concertineering of time, holding it still. This is not about, I mean, it's very, it, it probably seems obvious, but things have to be stated about art. This is not documentary art. But when we think about the role of this work, it's very important to consider it's not documentary, and yet it is not completely still life. It's not portraiture, and yet it represents people domestically. It's not sentimental, and yet it's touching. And so as we go through the exhibition, I want to pick up on those different relationships to photography and what photography can do. Here we are in a very, very grand room in Pushkin House. And I'll just characterise what I see here before I ask John any more. 
What we have is again a range from kind of in a way still life, elements, fruit, food, an empty plate, taken almost topographically so we get the relationship to the ground or the surface and the pattern. And then the kind of centralizing or circular image of the plate, of the plate here of a child wrapped up in a bundle in an almost quasi-orientalist situation there, very beautiful with the leaves. And so you have this kind of centralizing. And yet on the other hand, we have also certain elements where we have an expansion of the space. A young woman traveling, we're looking out across absolutely mind-blowingly infinite landscape. And here it's fantastic, everyone's dream to be in this shallow water in enough heat to be able to take your clothes off and again an extension of space. Now I know that you know I talked about the importance for photographers to return. This is not about documentary but we have to talk to John, the photographer, to the artist about relations of function. What does the work do in many ways? And that's not me saying that art has to have function in an obvious way. But it, did you find yourself, when becoming so close to the subjects of your photograph, wishing to provide work that they kind of felt represented them well? Yes, I did. Um, very much so. I became very good friends with Georgi. And sadly, he died about 15 years ago. And I feel a responsibility to him to show his family in the, in the best light. But having set, said that, I think it's also a, a, a political um, viewpoint. I think in, in showing things in their best light, we can show how we ourselves can become better beings. And I think to, to change the world, we all need to become better people. So in a way, what you're showing is the absolute joy of communality. Exactly. Yeah. And a family, not in its oppressive sense, but in its extended potential. Mm -hmm. um, this is incredibly important because your work will go from apparently the general, oh, Russian, uh, to the very particular, the individual. And some people have written about your work, and I can't remember who it is, but the notion of the singularity which I find very important politically, because as you say, if you show things in a good light, maybe you're, you're not propagandizing, because there's a closeness to that notion of the good life or the future or the heroic, mm -hmm. but on the other hand, you're, you're talking about something that's real. But this isn't to do with realism as well. So perhaps we could take us back a bit in terms of your relationship and, for instance, the earlier work with flowers, mm. and how you saw that work functioning. Photography is so inexplicable, so strange. I strive for simplicity and clarity in my picture making to compensate. Whether it's still lives of flowers from my father's garden, a landscape from Russia, or a portrait of children skipping, I want it to be clear what you're looking at. I'm drawn to the beauty of the everyday, because it's precisely by focusing on that we can imagine a better world. After all, the everyday is what we all have in common and which is therefore of highest importance. The great thing about still life for painters is that it's in a way full of subject but empty of subject. So in a way, still life is a way to start you on something that isn't about subject in the most obvious sense. Mm. Um, can you just tell me a bit also about any of your relationship to painting whatsoever? Because obviously there is these very strong relationships to genre here that come out of the traditional ideas about painting. Yes, painting is important to me. Um, after all, painters have been describing the world, have been um, trying to interpret the world, trying to transform the world through picture making for much longer than photography has been around. And if, if you include drawing in that, 
it of course goes back to the beginning of civilization. So yes, I very much look to, to painting and to painters as guides and as teachers to how to construct my photographs. We're very fortunate about uh, living in, um, in London with the National Gallery and particularly now with Covid it's much em emptier than normal and it's a fantastic opportunity to see the paintings there. And recently I've been, been become very fascinated with hands and with um, gestures and I've been looking how painters through history have been, have been dealing with that. With my work flower, together with another work crescents, I was strongly influenced by the painter Luke Tynans. He observed that pictures, if they are to have an effect, must have a tremendous intensity of silence. And with the work that um, we're talking about today at, at Pushkin House, my, my photographs from Russia, um, Again, very much, I didn't want the work to be pinned down. But I think most of all with this work, I was looking at, if I had to single out two things, it would perhaps be colour and, and pattern. One of the painters I've been finding myself returning to are the glossy coloured and madly patterned interiors of Edouard Fouliard. I particularly like somehow the people where the people he depicts seem to almost disappear into the pattern wallpaper behind. There is a closeness to people, but also, as you say, there's a, there's a kind of contextualization where you don't see anyone. Mm. Where you're kind of looking, perhaps, at the centre of the table, and the conversation is around the side. And the silence, because they're photographs, they're all these things that don't give us so much, that give us, perhaps, me being facetious or not, but representing your role as well, as an observer mm -hmm. there. You kind of speak and you don't speak. Can you talk about how you see yourself in that context? My friendship with the Shulikovs and my, our shared journey through life together over the last 25 years is as important to me as the photographs on, as the, photographs on the wall. Whenever I, I go to visit, they, um, they always have a, a, a spare bed. They always have a place in the car and a plate at the table for me. They, they've become family and they joke that I'm the relative that lives in London rather than St. Petersburg. Yes, and, and you there learning Russian to speak some Russian, but in a way a bit like a still life yourself. <laughs> yeah, my, my Russian is very still today. Yes. No, so you were there as a kind of object, yeah. Yeah. but not in, in some strange yeah. way in animals, only possible represent what you're doing through what you share. Yeah, and also the language is important because not being fluent in Russian, in fact, that's an exaggeration, it's a, given me a space to look, whilst if I had been very fluent in Russian, the, my relationship with the family would be very different. You'd be swept up in narrative in yes, some yes, way, yes, you were slightly separate. I am. And so we feel like here also, so we feel we can look as well. We're not prying into anyone's life, mm. so there is a kind of dignity, which is a formal dignity. Yeah, and that's in a sense why I call the word we, because I like its simplicity, but I like how it's, mm. it includes the, the subject, the, the photographer, myself, the photographer, and the viewer too. It's, it's inclusive and it's expansive. If we are to change the world and envision a better place, we have to think of we rather than I. And obviously, uh, a lot of the work has something to do either with childhood or with what children see older people do. Mm -hmm. It plays a very important part of the work to me, and I, and in many respects, I think it's what humans do best is playing, and I wanted to show that. But in the relationship to my childhood, I have memories of playing in the snow, and I think on a basic level, that's one of the reasons I fell in love with Russia because of these beautiful winters. It's beautiful. Yeah, that was that was the most magical day at Snowstorm. And there, there is a lot of light. I mean, there's a lot of light against dark. A lot of sort of, uh, let's say, the light that it comes from painting as well, which is something that's between you and the surface. Mm. Um, can you just? 
very, be very boring technically before we go downstairs and talk about A, your decision not to frame this, which I think is quite right in this context, and B, the kind of the involvement the person has looking in the reflection or not of the surface of the photograph. The decision about framing came about to the the architecture of this beautiful home. It's so difficult to, to show art in because you're looking at the room and the view as much as the photograph. So I decided to, to use the training device that was already here to show my work and that was the decision around, around not actually physically framing the photographs to keep things as simple as possible. And then I think we were talking about the reflective mm. reflectiveness of the photograph. I very consciously printed these on gloss paper. Yeah. And in that sense, you see yourself as a viewer in them too. And it goes back to what I was saying perhaps before about the work encompassing the, the, the subject matter of the photographs and, and, and the viewer and, and the person who's taking them myself. And another thing, uh, this, is, this, is, this is very important and very much to do with photography at the moment, the way it's displayed, whether it's kind of participatory or whether it's far away from you. And you play a bit with the scale of the image. For instance, we have this fantastic, gorgeous scene with a lot of food and the family, uh, and yet you, in a way, make that smaller. Uh, so, and, I mean, you don't hang up high or whatever, but there is a sort of sense of manipulation or control of us as we come into the space in terms of what you give immediately and what you retain. I mean, I'm answering that. So here we are on the grand staircase, lower from, mm. from where we started. And actually the first work that it really is framed is this fabulous sort of roundabout or magic roundabout. And what I want to say about this work is that it's very, very formally held, the subject itself, and this beautiful roundabout is held. But at the top, the kind of the dome or the cupola at the top is kind of very wonky. So there is a sense of something very warm and well worn, but still representing incredible, you know, delight and possibility. I like the relationship between the virgin snow and the very trodden snow. And the sense of something that's quite warm, but is just kind of transformative in the most incredible way for young people and for us. And it's framed, and yet the object itself is framed by its own decorative cloth here, and then the trees encroaching. So it is really like a sort of dream. Uh, can you tell me about your choice, about this image, actually? Tell me about the image. The image I actually took in 2007 to a uh, to trip to Russia in the new year. And, but I, I didn't print it until 2019. So, and that is very characteristic of all my work where I will take an image, but there's always a time period for me to think and reflect mm -hmm. on things. So it was existing in my studio as a small end print. What's important about what you're saying about this is this time delay in your relationship to your own work. And I think that's incredibly true. I think you go back to the same place because of your familiarity and that tells with the work. It's not you going, you being a kind of imperialist with place. And in a way, you can't even be an imperialist with your own work. You have to kind of, or maybe you have to find it. Maybe you can be imperial later. You go through things and you go, wow, that seems so good now. And that's very interesting because in a way time changes, but it stays mm -hmm. the still. Mm -hmm. But when one looks at paintings, like if you go and look at Velasquez in the Prado again and again, every time I look at the famous Velasquez, I feel some, I see something completely different depending on my needs. Mm -hmm. So in a way, what you see in your own work is very different each time. Yeah, no, exactly. And I think related to one of the reasons I need the distance is with all my work, it always, it always comes out of my life. I don't have an, an idea and then go off and make no. the work. It comes out, of, comes out of my life. And in that sense, I need a distance. 
Um, for example, with this work, I have a very close relationship with the Shulikov family and their friends. And so I, I've got to try to distance myself a little bit emotionally from the photographs. It's not always possible or possible at all, but I think the distance helps that. No, I think you do. Time helps. Time helps, yeah. It doesn't cure, but it, yeah. it changes things. Yes. So, okay. Amazingly, we're in the sort of library section of Pushkin House. So strangely, unconsciously or consciously, already surrounded by a different way of approaching context. The backs of books, the sense of understanding and collection and the collection of images and so on. So strangely, that does the job and it would have determined the, sh the work you show here. So basically, both of these become in a way, icons or representations of the rest of the show for me. So in a way, they're like motifs. It's a bit like the key at the side of a map. You know, you have the map and then you have the thing telling you what it is. So here we have this incredible light coming from elsewhere, from above and around, onto the bowl, but also the fact that one's viewing it from above. It's on the table, one looks down. So about setting up a kind of iconic, sort of mandala type image. For me, uh, it's sort of a motif for the centralization of subject. Mm. And circles are always a big part of my work. I know I you did a circle. I do a lot of circles, circle so in a sense it's symbolic to me for that. Work always comes out of a cooperation. I've talked very much how it's a, more than a cooperation with the family, but this one has been very much influenced by Elena who created the show. Um, she saw this my photograph from my studio, I would only have it printed this size and Elena liked it very much and wanted me very strongly to show it here. And it was one, I'd never seen it, so again that photograph was taken in the early 2000s and this year is the first time I've seen it printed properly. What's interesting is that you have that kind of uh, natural fade to the side so it's almost like, and, and a lot of this work has a strange relationship to, to the history and to, to, to the past and to memory. So almost a lot of them look as if, obviously they're made by you, these photographs, mm. but they're not stridently new. They look as if they kind of, they did happen at another time. This mm. was taken at a different time. And I've lived with it for a long time. Exactly, yeah. and they're kind of yeah. found again. Mm. So it's a bit like um, things put outside a charity shop. You look through them, you wonder if, uh, new or old or yeah, whatever, yeah, you know, exactly. in terms of images. Yeah. Yeah. And this, uh, just to be quite honest, you know, here we are looking out, out into the landscape, even just into the garden. I thought to close the shutters so you had a window there. Exactly, and window. exactly. So we have a window representing it. We have a very direct structural, the, the build here and mm. then, but of course the other thing which is very important. There's a kind of halfway house, which is the material, the cloth, which kind of comes across the surface through which you also, so it's sort of like a sort of, it's not infinite space. It's sort of tempered or once held back, which is often happens with your work. So there's that relationship to the cloth. So I think we started this discussion talking about the way that your photographs can exist in many different form and material, you know, they can materialize, they can be in a book. And obviously the book functions very differently with very good essays. And also there's a slideshow. Tell me about the slideshow. The space downstairs isn't, uh, it would be a very difficult place to exhibit in. It doesn't have the architectural aspects of these other rooms. Mm. It's, a, it's a basement space. I thought it was a good way to, for people to see the, 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 the overall archive. I like the contrast between the very minimal hand and the fulsome, immersive, enveloping journey that the slideshow takes you on. In the body of the house, my photographs are still moments, transformed into objects. I see them very much as sculpture in dialogue with the rooms. In the basement, in the slideshow, they become cinematic and ephemeral, fleeting moments like our own lives. <laughs>